Sweden's A-26 submarine picked for Poland by Craig Langford, November 26, 2025 Nine Share Poland has selected Sweden's A-26 design as its preferred option to replace its aging Kilo-class submarine, choosing Saab and the Swedish state offer as the basis for negotiations, according to an announcement from Stockholm. No contract has yet been signed and Saab has not received an order, but the decision marks a major step toward a Swedish-Polish submarine partnership. Saab's president and chief executive Michael Johansson said the company was honored to have been selected and argued that the A-26, purpose-built for Baltic Sea conditions, represents the right choice for the Polish people. He said the selection would strengthen the Polish Navy and support the national economy through planned industrial cooperation and technology transfer. The Swedish government's proposal centers on advanced variants of the A-26 Blecking class, equipped with modern sensors, long-duration air-independent propulsion and a multi-mission portal for special operations and uncrewed underwater vehicles. The platform carries heavyweight and lightweight torpedoes, mine navigation sonars, Atlas Electronic Flank Arrays and Saffron Series 30 Optronics. It can operate for up to 45 days, including extended submerged endurance using its Stirling Engine AIP system, and typically carries a crew of 17 to 26. Sweden's Defense Material Agency, FMV, will now enter formal procurement discussions with its Polish counterpart. Negotiations will determine configuration, industrial work share and timelines for the new boats, which are intended to restore and expand Poland's submarine capability after years of decline in the fleet. The A-26 also stands out for its multi-mission portal, a large lock enabling divers, special forces, and uncrewed underwater vehicles to deploy directly from the hull. This feature reflects modern undersea warfare's shift toward greater emphasis on intelligence gathering, seabed operations, and covert insertion missions. With NATO increasingly concerned about the security of seabed infrastructure, pipelines, communication cables, and energy networks, the ability to monitor, inspect, and if necessary, defend these assets from sabotage is becoming strategically important. For Poland, which sits at the center of Europe's evolving energy distribution system, the addition of a submarine with advanced reconnaissance and special operations capabilities adds valuable depth to national and allied maritime security. Sensor and weapon integration also plays a major role in why the A-26 was favored. The platform is expected to carry a mix of heavyweight and lightweight torpedoes, backed by advanced sonar suites including my navigation sonars, Atlas Electronic Flank Arrays, and Saffron Series 30 Optronics. These systems offer high-precision detection and engagement capabilities, essential in a region filled with legacy mines, mini-submarines, and increasingly sophisticated Russian naval activity. The combination of onboard sensors and the ability to deploy uncrewed underwater vehicles enhances the A-26's situational awareness, enabling the submarine to operate effectively in both offensive and defensive roles. From an industrial perspective, Poland's selection of Sweden's offer goes well beyond pure procurement. The Swedish government's proposal includes plans for significant industrial cooperation and technology transfer, which could provide a substantial boost to Poland's shipbuilding and defense sectors. As Poland continues its rapid military modernization across land, air, and naval domains, the ability to participate in production, maintenance, and future development of advanced platforms is a key strategic objective. Successful negotiations could lead to joint production programs, deeper integration of Polish industry into Swedish supply chains, and long-term collaboration on next-generation naval technologies. Such cooperation would also reinforce the defense relationship between Poland and Sweden, two frontline NATO states sharing similar threat assessments and security priorities. The timing of this submarine initiative is also noteworthy. With Finland and Sweden now fully integrated into NATO, the Baltic Sea has effectively become an operational basin dominated by Allied forces. This creates new opportunities for coordinated anti-submarine warfare, intelligence sharing, and joint maritime operations. A common submarine platform like the A-26 enhances interoperability, 
allowing Polish crews to train and operate alongside Swedish units with shared systems, shared tactics, and shared logistical frameworks. This convergence improves NATO's ability to conduct both defensive and deterrent missions in one of Europe's most strategically sensitive maritime regions. The next phase involves Sweden's defense material agency FMV entering formal procurement discussions with Poland. These negotiations will determine the number of submarines, their exact configuration, the division of industrial work, and the timeline for delivery. Given the complexity of submarine construction and the importance of local involvement, the process may take time, but the political momentum appears strong on both sides. For Poland, securing new submarines is a matter of restoring a capability that has been allowed to decline for years. For Sweden, the deal represents both an industrial triumph and a reinforcement of regional security ties at a moment when deterrence in the Baltic Sea is paramount. In strategic terms, Poland's choice of the A-26 reflects a clear shift toward high-end, NATO-compatible capabilities and away from legacy Soviet-designed systems. It strengthens the alliance's collective maritime posture and deepens Polish-Swedish defense integration. If negotiations succeed and the contract is finalized, the A-26 will not only modernize Poland's submarine fleet but also elevate its role in regional security, undersea surveillance, and allied maritime operations. This decision signals Poland's intention to secure a long-term technological edge in one of the most challenging operational environments in Europe, ensuring that the Polish Navy remains a capable, credible, and interoperable force in the years ahead.